So with the finale and the wrapping up of Digimon 2020, episode 67, we have to talk about it. And we're going to talk about it quite differently. So I'm Dimzy and we have the tribal chief. We have the man of the moment, the Digimon master, Shady. Hello. And we're going to just dissect this episode. We're not going to try and talk about the whole series as a whole because again we don't want to take away from this episode and you know what spoiler alert a fantastic episode and we're gonna go into detail exactly why it was fantastic and if there were any moments that can be improved um anyway before that yo shady man what an episode yeah man and just before we begin the review we thought since it's the finale we thought both of us would jump on this call and just do the video just to to get our points across not only me but yourself as well so that's why we thought both of us would be on this video so yeah what an episode i think this was probably my favorite episode of the series honestly it was a very hopeful episode it it was just it was so positive and Mm. digimon finales are not usually like that well it's positive in the sense that they beat the main villain but then it always ends in a sad note this episode didn't it was very hopeful and positive and i enjoyed it i loved it this was it was so refreshing to see yeah um and if we were to let's go through the story and here's the thing for the last couple of episodes and heck a lot of the series we've been complaining about certain thing certain things feeling quite disjointed and i expected the main fight to kind of just last one half and the next half is them trying to get to grips with what just happened yeah and that happened but the thing with um the fight with the digidestin well with omniman and negamon and negamon's evolved form was that it really was just a slugfest it was 15 minutes of no nonsense no filler beautiful animation and Quite a lot of things happen, especially on the Omnimon front, which I'm sure you're going to go into. But I I always said, look, you know what? Just shut up. Give it a allocated amount of time and just do some decent amount of fighting and make it look good. With the Millennium one, as much as we hype it up, as much as we loved it, mm. it, it wasn't the same quality as what we saw in this finale. This one was literally every scene, every moment, every setting was different. And from a aesthetic point of view, without going into the content, it just looked glorious. And one of the things which I'm not sure if you guys picked up with the way it looked, I per- and also last episode, but I personally thought this was more of an homage to not only the first theatrical release of Digimon in 1999, but also the Digimon movie against Diaboromon. You know how they were in that the network world and you have that weird amount of fading or lighting and that highlight on the outlines yeah this episode there was a lot of homages and we will go into them later on but yeah that first half what did you make of the first half if anything let's just go through what happened wow yeah so basically the episode starts off with omnimon ty and mac going through the portal and not portal but going into um the big giant negamon body and actually seeing the real body and Mate, it was just too. <laughs> Negamon talks, which was. Oh, oh which my is, god! Yeah. Oh my god! The, you know what? Sorry, I, I must have forgotten that because I must have gone off a topic where when I said there's a couple of things that we wanted and we've been clamoring for. Negamon talking was actually one of them. That was probably one of the main things we wanted him to bloody talk. Exactly, which was so like Nidhogman never spoke. Millennium man never spoke. But at least we got Negaman speaking. And the stuff he was saying as well is very, <laughs> very dark, very negative. Of course, yeah. Negaman, negative. And you what know one I... thing, yeah? Yeah. Um, what did you make of the fact that obviously you had the outer body where the other Megas are fighting. And then you had the inner body, which essentially was like this humanoid kind of thing. He yeah. looked amazing. And he looked like the ultimate opposite of um of omega man omni man yeah it look great i was literally just about to say you you said um opposite of omni man so omni man has the grace the the omni sword on his left left hand and the guru cannon on his right but negaman had the sword had his sword on his right arm and his cannon on his left arm so, so and he was wearing a cape so he literally looked like omni man was fighting an evil twin like a, a psycho ranger version of himself so yeah. that I really found quite interesting. And even uh, Negaman was attacking with his cape. He, there was a scene where, you know, those eyeballs that were on, that were on his cape. 
they were shooting lasers yep. but omnimon uses his cape as a shield so it's literally yin and yang opposite light and dark and negative and positivity it's literally it was literally that and then and, what did you what did you make out when um when omnimon was again put on the ropes and we saw a few iterations of omnimon yeah but before that before we get into that omnimon i think this was probably one of the toughest fights omnimon has ever had we never seen omnimon be pushed like this there was a scene where and also i wanted to mention you know ty and matt this was the first time you know how we usually see omnimon with ty and matt on the, on his shoulders ty and matt they yeah. usually like they scream like omnimon attack that, that's what they, the usual stuff omnimon attack omnimon defend and all that stuff here yeah? this time it felt like ty and matt yeah, were in control of him. omnimon yeah. yeah 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 it's like yamato can you do this and then um you know it's like yamato was um well matt was doing the garuru can now like, exactly going on here? exactly and we saw omnimon do moves that we've never seen before so you know through the garuru cannon we were seeing missiles coming through on top of the garuru cannon's head and matt activated that and we also yeah. saw tai using the omni shield the the, the crest of courage shield to block one of um, negaman's attacks and he actually, Negaman, this is quite, I, I, I liked what, what Negaman did here. He got this sludge or this thing coming out of his body and he made this, you know, that giant worm. It was like wor a Majin Buu. Yeah, like, like a Majin Buu, gooey kind of thing. And, Neg and Tai used the, 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 the Shield of Courage to block it and then he used it to destroy that worm. And mm. it, it was really good that the fact that both of them, when they weren't just screaming, you know, Omniman attack, you know, blah, blah, blah. They were actually helping. They were actually using Omniman. It was like, it was really good. It was, I thought that was a really good change that they did. Yeah. And obviously, um, we've seen Omniman a few times, um, so far in the series. And we had a lot of, a lot of people had their thoughts on it, but it started off with both Ty and Matt in like some sort of trance and they couldn't remember. And for it to end with them literally fighting beside, alongside, and I guess part of Omniman. It yeah. was a really, really great move. Yeah. And everyone has been speculating that we're going to see another form of Omniman. And you know what? Before we actually go into our proper thoughts, because we will say, okay, as, as perfect as the episode was, how could we have improved it? Or how could we, um, you know, what did we really enjoy? What did we kind of not enjoy? Omniman had a few forms, man. All right. So Omniman Ultras, he came about after the Digidestin team were, using, were basically going up against Negaman's words. Negaman was using words like seclusion and void and emptiness and all this horrible negative stuff, but and which would naturally cause them to fall into despair. And Tai, Omniman, and Matt, they were actually getting deleted. I don't know if you clocked. They were they had that white thing. Just it was like they were disappearing when they unleashed the sword into Negaman, but then the sword didn't work. So then they were disappearing and Negaman was using his words. It's like his words are attacks themselves. So which were affecting the Digidestin. But then the Digidestin yeah. harnessed like that hope within the within themselves. And then they unleashed the crest power to then digi like to sh to yeah, then. But you, you know what I would say about that? It yeah. was also genius on Negaman's part because they remember at that sequence, we thought, oh crap, Omniman got it. Because how does he tend to normally win a lot of his battles with the with the sword, right? With the Omni Sword. Yeah, so he put the sword through Negaman's body, but the Neg I think that was a trap because Negaman then bit on that sword and it seemed like he corrupted or he's deleting it. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. again, those small things um, are just fantastic. And you know what? I was going to talk about later, but I just want to mention that we will speak about the fantastic OST, the fantastic rendition of the music. It's been amazing. Yeah. But yeah, like... Ultras's appearance, um, how did you find that? Because I, look, we, we've been expecting some sum of Ultras for a while now, but for him to then appear the way he did, I don't know, was the build-up, was the appearance, was it foreshadowed enough within the episode itself? Because we know Blitz Greymon and Kreskarumon existed so far, but having them appear, mm. I don't know. What do you reckon? I, I, I enjoyed it, man. It's the finale. I, I, I'll be honest, it, it doesn't even matter like I, I i expected i expected another form of omnimon anyway so omnimon crest the um, ultra s form is probably one of my favorite omnimon forms anyway so i i just got hyped i'm not gonna lie to you I, the 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 inner digimon fanboy was just going mad 
when I, when I saw that, and especially when he was yeah. shooting the lasers just before he was forming. And yeah, it was like, do you know what it reminded me of? You know when eventually when Chris, um, when Omni Umnan Ultra S came out, you know when he sliced uh, Negaman in half, there was that little bit of like stardust yeah. coming out. It reminded, it really reminded me of Gogeta when Gogeta was fighting Janemba in, you know, in the in the Dragon Ball Z film. They when he really used that put a lot of love on that animation. Yeah, he really reminded me of that. Like he reminded me of Gogeta coming out of nowhere and just dominating everything. And that that slice he did, the Stardust, it, it proper reminded me of Gogeta. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, I reckon that um, obviously Ultras had to make an appearance. And I kind of really enjoyed the fact that they, we didn't get Omniman Merciful mode, and it was Ultras instead. Yeah, because we had that in try. And having um, Ultra S in um, in 2020, it just felt, it, it just worked. And oh my God, did he look great! But yeah, yeah. with Negaman's defeat, um, let's let's quickly because the second half is a complete pivot away, and we can talk about that in a bit. But what did you reckon about the OST? Because I think the music really did make this uh, fight as epic as it did, because it was an orchestral feel to it, yeah. and it just like. And it just felt like, I don't know, very heartwarmingly epic. And I'm like, oh crap, come on. It's as if that we were all cheering behind the screens for both Ty and Matt. Like genuinely, I got the feeling that all the children around the world are cheering for them. And Yeah, and they were watching them on yeah. their phones. So they, they actually were cheering for them. But um, yeah, now nah, the instrumental, there, there was an instrumental. I don't know. I think it was, um, was it... It was break the, the chain. Yeah, right? break the chain instrumental. That was solid. It was the, extre- it was elongated as well. Wow. Yeah, and there was the scene where, with that music as well, where Omnimon, when Omnimon turned and he used the Guru cannon and shot a laser through his cape, and with the music as well, it was like a nice little disguise. I think that was probably my favorite move that Omnimon did. You know my um. It's, it's, this is not an issue it's more so highlighting the potential of Digimon the creativity that you can have in these fights was displayed in this fight with um, with Omnimon and of course Negamon's evolution or his final form per se there was so much that happened in this fight that it made you feel like wow what a, what a fight and this again as you said I personally think that it's the best episode in Digimon 2020 this yeah. is the best fight in Digimon 2020 heck best fight in Digimon Adventure um, in my opinion. Omnimon's just, best fight. Yeah, Omnimon's best fight. Um, but I have a bit of a issue. They're going into Negaman, yeah? So yeah, mm. he wants um, Time and Omnimon to come in. But I just felt, did, did uh, Negaman feel a bit nerfed to you? I know yeah. he was handling all of the other Megas on the outside, but I was thinking, why are you... It's as if that Negaman's trying to be noble or have an even fight with Omniman. I was like, no man, just go all out. Use the surroundings, start shooting lasers from this, uh, from the edges. Very similar to how Diaboroman, when he multiplied, yeah. he just thought, right, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. Um, and I kind of wanted that attitude from Negaman of, he's gonna do whatever it takes to just consume all. Yeah, do you know what, you, make a, you, you do make a good point actually, yeah. But I think, I think the animators and the writers just wanted like, evil Omniman, like negative Omniman and versus normal Omniman. I, th- I think that they, they were more focusing on the one-on-one duel rather yeah. than the, 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 the Negaman's surroundings, Negaman's dimension. Bas- it is Negaman's dimension, basically. He can actually do whatever he wants. Remember there yeah. was that scene, I think, where he shot him, where Omniman, sh- Omni-Man used the Guru and then shot him. And then he became this giant snake this giant this bit of you can't explain it yeah yeah, it's just like this um evolving piece of just meat or yeah Um, this giant worm digital digitized worm yeah but then you know what one thing is that maybe that we're underestimating because because remember this year at this point would it be fair to say that negaman or the evolved form of negaman abaraman whatever it is yeah was he stronger than millennium on was he strong? I don't think he was, man. Millennium Man, remember, <laughs> Millennium Man's fingernail destroyed a mount, destroyed a volcano and a mountain. Yeah, He's, but that's, that's that's because of sheer size. And I sheer think size. That, I think that Negaman could do the sheer size aspect, but in terms of raw power, because he was not only affecting the digital world but also the real world, wasn't he? But Millennium so, Man, Millennium Man was actually nerfed anyway, because Millennium Man can actually control time and space. So. Okay. He can go. He can go from dimension to dimension and do whatever he wants. So yeah. Millennium Man was nerfed anyway. 
Fair enough. So, well, I guess I guess that discussion is a video for another day. Yeah, but my point millennia- was, yeah. Did did Negaman feel a bit nerfed in this episode, or did they kind of hype up Omniman much more? Because we know Omniman when he made an appearance against Algoman, who was a mega cool. That's fine. Algoman at the time was a was a hyped up more of a stronger mega, and when mm. he made his appearance against Need Hogman, who was a I would say a mega mega because even Eisman was given a lot of the ultimates yeah. a run for the money. So Need Hogman was just this supercharged mega as well. So yeah. Omniman making an appearance made sense. But my my point and my thinking is that Omniman kind of felt like he was given an even playing field by uh, Negaman. And the only thing I would say to that is in my head I'm thinking, can Omniman, even Ultra S, can he make the same amount of uh, fight can he cause the same amount of trouble to Millennium Man or heck even Zed Millennium Man as he did with Mega Man? Or again, as you said, is it just simply they done it so that they wanted a one on one with Mega Man and Omni Man? You know the negative Omni Man and the the miracle and the catastrophe. Mm. That's exactly what it was: the Digimon of miracles against the Digimon of catastrophe. Basically, um, yeah. Hit and also, it was, it was great to see um, Omni Man. Well, great to hear Omni Man actually speak. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the thing. Yes, we could have had, you know, Negaman dominate Omniman with his, in that warped Negaman world. But the thing is, this episode really wanted to be very different and positive. I can't stop saying that as well. In the, in the episode, in, in the episode itself, yeah, Omniman was saying, uh, what, what, what did he say? He said, we are bound, we are not bound, no, we are bound of limitless potential. Basically saying, there is no limit to how much we can be and we don't have to be good or evil he was saying that to negaman as negaman was dying he even yeah. said goodbye to negaman he's so, with me again yeah exactly exactly so that also is so different to kizuna as well with kizuna i think this episode really wanted to do the opposite of what kizuna did kizuna i completely was, agree i Kiz- completely agree on that Kizuna wanted to pull on the heartstrings and the emotions and really like make us feel for it, which it did. It did perfectly well. But this, I felt like they, there won't be, a, I don't think there will be a sequel to this, but they left the door open for there to be a sequel. Negaman can come back. Digimon don't die. They always come back. And that's what he, Omniman meant to Negaman, that when he does come back, he doesn't have to be evil. He can be good and he can, yeah. he can be even more stronger as well. I think that's what Omnimon was saying and that's the potential, that's the limitless potential that Omnimon talks about. But in, in Kizuna, there was a cap to the potential. In Kizuna, again, as you said, thematically, it was so different, especially the ending compared to the ending of this episode. So let's talk about the second half. The second half starts off with, it's like the Digimon telling a story. You have Wiseman, we got Leo. Oh, by the way, fun fact, Leomon survived the series. Yeah, yeah. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Oh 67 episodes and he survived. The 67. longest ever Digimon series season and, and Leo survived. One survived it. Wow. Wow. That's we, madness. we really are in a negative word, world, it seems. Um, yeah. But yeah, having Leo Man and Wise Man all narrate the, the legend, it seems, of the Digidestined. We don't know how much time has elapsed. We don't know how the difference between the digital world and the real world is. We yeah. had an idea back in the day when, uh, not back in the day, but in the early episodes with the with the freight ship and whatnot. But as of right now, we don't know. But it was just a nice little tea and a nice little crescendo and a build up to when we finally see the Digidestin as essentially the Leoman and um, Wiseman, they're hyping them up, hyping them up. And then we see all of the Digimon that we've met along the way, be it Etaman, be it all of these Digimon. Etaman, Etaman was Etaman. dancing on top of Tankman. I don't know if you saw. Yes. I found that funny. <laughs> but like, e- even on the most recent one where we saw Gravimon as well, like we saw every single one of them yeah. just in the digital world. And then the eggs hatching and that egg potentially could uh, represent Negamon in his new life but essentially we saw the digital world thriving and then we cut to the real world and it's the same we see Sora as we saw her when she was first introduced they're running Running, one by one um actually no if even before that you know when um you know when before they went back to the real world there was that moment with all of the digidestin in that Negaman world how did you find that? I found that quite interesting because it seems like all of them were saying, ah, it's like the final farewell or whatever. Um, and TK said, no, he doesn't want to go. And Kari and Gatoman, they're so happy they met each other. 
and then there's a flash of light before going on to you, uh, the Digimon narrating the legend. Do you know what? Like, you know that scene, yeah, in that little void world dimension. Do you know what it reminded me of? It really reminded me of um the... It's a callback, I think, to the original series. You know when Apoclemon sent them to that weird void dimension of yeah. zeros and ones and obviously the digitestum were like they were defeated because you know they just got battered by our pokemon but then like when they were hyping themselves up again they were talking about like oh let's go we don't need the digivices we don't need the crests let's go let's go at it again it really reminded me of that scene because both both of them were uplifting they weren't they, they didn't dwell on the you know they could have eased in this episode they could have easily Oh my god now what's what's next is this the end we're never going to see each other again they could have easily done that but they didn't they chose to oh when's the like tk was saying oh i, I could go on for another i could still quite carry on fighting I think that, so i think that's an i think that is a nod to not only the upcoming series of digimon ghost game also a nod to his appearance and his um his role in Digimon 02 and that cast and also his potential appearance in the upcoming Digimon 02 movie yeah so, so I yeah. think a lot of it was these nods and by the end we saw uh, Izzy saying oh uh, maybe we'll see each other in like another version or another whatever um, and when we finally get to see the Digidestin how did you react when you saw that the Digimon are actually in the real world I loved it man I, honestly because you always get the whole like this is why I'm this is why I really love this year. So many times. Oh, we're never going to see each other again. So many, so many times. In Kizuna, they did it. In the original, they did it. In Try, we had Mako dying. Mako Man dying. There's always this sad... It always ends in a sad note. Even though, you know, it's it bittersweet, let's just, let's just say. I'm so happy that it finally ended in a really good note. Because yeah. I didn't expect that. I'll be honest. I thought, okay... You know, they, 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 they're going to say they're oh, we're still going to be, you know, friends. Because that's what Matt and them were saying. Um, or oh, we're still going to be friends forever, no matter what. Yeah, which, of course, that's what they're going to say. But then you expect them to never, like, them, the Digimon will be in the digital world and then the humans will be in the real world, yeah. But you wouldn't expect them to see each other again. But then yeah. when you saw the, when you saw Gomoman in Joe's bag, you know, was Joe was taking an exam. I'm not gonna lie. I I I loved it. Honestly, it's so it's so refreshing. Finally, I completely agree. I it's completely so agree refreshing. With the fact that it was extremely positive. It yeah, was so, man. So different. And I guess the point was, you know how we said there was a lot of callbacks and that. Kizuna had a very bittersweet ending. Kizuna's ending was Tai and Matt um, saying goodbye to Agumon and uh, Gabumon, but without having that final moment, that final hug. Whereas this time, they all had that moment. They all had their time and their real moment with each of the Digimon and yeah. it still wasn't over. It really was so effective and again, very, very uplifting and very different to what we're used to from Digimon. Digimon exactly. is, um, the reason why Digimon's praise so much is because it's able to convey deeper, sadder, heavier storylines compared to Pokemon or other anime, which you'd expect, oh, what's going on? This one, it, it, it did its better best to do it but at the same time he just stuck to his guns and said you know what i'm a shonen i'm let, let's be happy and that's exactly what they did and my my um the, my mark out moment where i smiled from ear to ear was when i saw the end because they're going from one digi destin to the next and it yeah. finally ended with tai and it was tai under a tree with argomon what does that remind you of digimon 1999 episode one started off with tai on a branch on a tree on his own it was just a nice little call back to say listen you started off alone but now you have your partner you started off alone but look at look at us we rebooted this series 20 years later it was a little love letter it was the stamp on a letter which shows we love digimon and the creators literally made this series just for us and also to potentially make more fans or newer fans for digimon in the form of digimon 2020 yeah yeah and I just want to make it clear. Um, we're not saying that the other endings of Digimon is bad. Far from it. They they were effective. They were oh, emotional. They were everything. They were they were solid. We're not saying they were bad. But it's just it always ends in a very sad, happy, bittersweet ending. This ending was not that. It was just pure good. It just felt good. It was a feel good moment. 
yeah. do for this ending which is why we like it so much so guys in the comments don't think we're bashing the ending of kizuna the original and try and all that we're not we're just we're just saying how different comparing this ending to the others is and, to and be honest, why guys, we like it so much yeah and to be honest, comment down below what you preferred as to which ending you preferred because we can actually talk about this we can have a little community video speaking about the endings of all the digimon adventure or the digimon series and we can talk about and compare them and just have a little discussion because we really want to hear your stuff because listen this is our final digimon 2020 episode review yeah but let's oh make days. one thing clear i know it's crazy but let's make one thing clear from the highs and lows for this series we are eternally grateful for the support that you've given us and you know what don't don't think that we haven't seen a lot of you lot we under we have seen exactly who has commented all yeah. the time you guys are legends living legends and genuinely you you put a smile to our faces every sunday with the comments and the insightful commentary and discussions and theories yeah you guys are really the the proper stars right now especially Honestly. for this year yeah zero jaroshi gatoman sophie so many you so guys many. You so many honestly like we could name we could we could do a video on the list of you guys if you wanted to but even in before i would always mention like oh this zero jo like in the in the theory video last week or a couple weeks ago i mentioned that zero jiroshi mentioned this little comment i can't remember what it was but we always whenever you guys comment something we'll always note it down and if it's something really like really cool and a really good theory we'll mention it in a video and we might even make a video out of it as well so and we'll honestly guys you lot. It, honestly it's look um let's let's be real here because look um we don't we don't um work nor do we actually really watch anyone else um yeah but the support that you've given us and especially in quite a bit of a in a bloody pandemic it was it meant it meant the world it meant the world and hopefully we have many more videos to come but if there are any topics that you want us to cover just let us know um i think this would be a good time to let them know about our other projects right yeah yeah but, but one one little thing I, I just wanted to say before we mentioned our little other stuff guys i know we've been we we treat you guys we want to give you sh we want to show you guys respect so maybe there were videos where we would not bash digimon 2020 but we'll have our critiques of it right so and even in our reviews as well we'll critique some stuff but that's only because we are being real and we want you guys we, wa we want to show you guys the respect on yeah. what our thoughts are that's why don't like we don't want you guys to take it personally if you guys agreed if you guys don't agree with us that's fine because you're digimon fans we are also digimon fans we just like things in a certain way and you might like things in a certain way we've been making digimon videos since 2015 so i think it's safe to say that we are also hardcore digimon fans as well so yeah. whenever we critique something don't like don't be don't take it personally all right so if you like yeah it, we respect yeah. them as well like that's the yeah. thing look um there are people yeah be it whatever media they're reviewing they they just sugarcoat everything because they just want to make it out that it's perfect and dandy digimon wasn't a perfect series it was far from it, if anything yeah. but we can't forgive ourselves to lie or just pull the wool over your eyes and say oh by the way guys blah 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 like there's times when it just looked crap there's time it looked amazing now this yeah. episode we're speaking about this episode it was amazing it was a flawless digimon episode 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 it was the best they could uh, muster but yeah as shady said we just can't forgive ourselves if we were to just be anything lie. but honest and yeah. genuine with you lot yeah we can't lie to you guys honestly that's yeah. why we may have sounded a bit harsh in our in our critiques of the series that's just us being real guys literally that's it so if yeah. you if we disagree respect if you liked one one moment in digital 2020 which we didn't like respect to you at least you enjoyed it we didn't enjoy it but you enjoyed it that's the main yeah. thing and we're all digimon fans at the end of the day and but i guess going... um b before we actually even um because i won't speak about it too much i'll probably put a community post on it but uh, you know if you like the way we do our reviews we increase and up the quality substantially as we're doing and we have a new channel called shaman tribe where we cover the shaman king 2021 series again another reboot series that we're covering but let's let's take it back to digimon let's take it back to digimon and i just want to say that in terms of 2020 
and how it was overall we are going to have to cover this in a separate video because as positive as positive as this episode was there's 66 other episodes that preceded it so we will be talking about that and again please comment down below we will take them all into consideration and speak about that um and i know you guys love the underrated overrated character videos they will be coming back so don't worry you will be getting your tie dissections and you know so sora dissections you you'll be getting those so stay tuned for those and i'm yeah. sure you guys the you guys will love the 1999 2020 comparisons so those videos will be coming soon so stay tuned and um again just another heartfelt thank you from us to you lot and also an apology because i know that we started off with maybe two or three videos a week but there was a time when we both got sick as well um so we were just doing it through our sickness and stuff um so that's why you went to a video a week and such and again thank you for for sticking with us for as long as you guys did there was yeah. again uh, maybe our realism or whatever there was a drop off but for the ones who stuck around thank you so much yeah thank you thank you honestly <laughs> it's been fun reading your comments every week and i'll miss you guys so but it's not the end we're still going to be making digimon videos so there's, yeah. there's an adventure just around the corner and with exactly. that being said this has been the longest review for digimon 2020 that we've done yeah <laughs> and it deserves it as this is the best episode of digimon 2020 and it's the final episode of digimon 2020 so yeah, yeah guys so if you're driving to work listen to it on, over the over your commute if you're on the train listen to it just relax and enjoy and with that take care and evolve because i'm sure you can digital further on <laughs> <laughs> goodbye take care we love you bye bye care for nothing oh, come on man really what no care for nothing <laughs> No more care for nothing. <laughs> <laughs>